Welcome to the Drumbeat Conversations on Early Childhood Education. I'm Aaron Merchant, Director of Early Childhood Education Policies and Programs at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Foundation, and thrilled to be joined today by Charles All with the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce. Before we start our conversation on public-private partnerships and child care, Charles, uh, introduce yourself. Tell, tell the people about your experience. Sure. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, well, thanks for having me on here. My name is Charles All. I am the executive director of the Kentucky Chamber Center for Policy and Research. My job here at the Chamber is to run point on the Chamber's economic and public policy research initiatives. I also work a lot on our policy development side, which involves working with legislators, working with other stakeholders to craft pro-growth uh, legislation to move Kentucky's economy forward. And that often includes working uh, very frequently in the childcare space as well. And Charles, we were having a conversation not long ago, uh, and you mentioned that your background is actually in uh, tax policy, things that we more traditionally associate with, you know, capital B business. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, the, the groundswell of, of interest from your chamber members in Kentucky and, and why child care is such a hot topic right now? Sure. So one of the many joys of being a, a pro-business advocate and working in the world of chambers of commerce is that means you work on essentially every issue under the sun uh, because our economy is a very complicated animal. Lots of different issues affect the economy, affect things like economic growth. A lot of my background has been involved working on what you might consider more, more traditional business related issues. Um, I've spent a lot of time working on tax policy, a lot of time working on labor related issues, um, and of course, a whole lot of workforce related issues. Workforce in particular is something that has become a major point of concern uh, in Kentucky. It, that's, it's been a long term issue, but in particular, as of late, uh, it's a very, very pressing issue. Uh, Kentucky has one of the lowest rates of workforce participation in the nation. As of right now, we're about four points lower than the national average. Our prime age workforce participation rate is about three points lower than the national average. And as of July, there were more than twice as many open positions as there were unemployed individuals actively looking for work in Kentucky. And that's placed a whole lot of strain on our labor market and the ability of employers to meet the demands of consumers. And that's also something that we think is hindering economic growth in Kentucky. Back in 2021, we published a detailed report through the Kentucky Chamber of Commerce Foundation that dissected Kentucky's long-term workforce trends. And so we looked at about 20 years worth of labor market data to illustrate declining rates of workforce participation in Kentucky. And the big question we asked is, well, why? Why is that a problem? Why does Kentucky have one of the lowest rates of workforce participation? Why has it been in a state of decline for such a long, long period? And ultimately what we determined is that there were a multitude of different factors at play. One of those, however, was childcare. Um, the academic research on this, the economic research on this is very, very clear that a lack of access to good, high quality childcare is a major driver of low rates of workforce participation. And I don't think it's really difficult to understand why that is if you are a parent and you want to participate in the workforce, you want to get a job, you want to uh, make an income, That's and you, and you have a child, uh, more often than not, you can't take that child with you to work, of course, depending on the type of job you have. And so if people need a good, safe educational environment to take children. Um, they can care for their children while they're actively participating in the workforce. And if you do not have that, that will restrict the ability of a lot of would-be workers from being able to participate in the workforce. In Kentucky, that, that's been a particular challenge because we've seen a significant decline in the availability of child care uh, in this state. And that was, of course, accelerated during the course of the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's, that's going to be a major driver for low rates of workforce participation in this state. And so as an individual, who has spent a lot of their time working on tax policy, working on labor related issues, I found myself heavily focused on trying to address some of Kentucky's child care challenges because solving that challenge helps us get at one of those even greater challenges in our state, which is low rates of workforce participation. So I've had to learn a lot um, about the child care ecosystem, try to understand some of the market forces that are creating challenges within that ecosystem and are trying to understand why it is that we have such limited availability and also 
why um, affordability is also another really key challenge when it comes to um, early child education and child care. And so that's that's kind of what brought me to spending um, a, a very large amount of my time uh, focusing on solving our state's child care challenges. And Charles, you make a great point that it is not any one single you know set of stakeholders or one you know single issue that needs to be addressed when it comes to both the workforce and childcare, for that matter. Um, and Kentucky, you know, known for a lot of things, uh, playing college basketball well into the month of March, uh, world famous horse race. But recently, Kentucky has, in uh, childcare policy circles has really been on the map for some momentum that is uh, due in large part to the Kentucky Chamber. Uh, and that's House Bill 499 that really uh, brought together these different stakeholders, working parents, uh, employers, and businesses. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and uh, what that looks like and, and kind of how it came to be? Absolutely. Um, when we think of Kentucky's child care challenges, and I think this is true for probably every other state in the nation is that you can really kind of boil down these challenges into to two different buckets. Uh, one is availability, which I talked about a few minutes ago, uh, just simply finding access to childcare. But then even once you find access to childcare, particularly when it's higher quality childcare, which is what we want more of, then you run into the affordability issue. In Kentucky, general cost for childcare um, for a given year range from about $6,000 to around $11,000 a year. Um, to put that into context, Kentucky has a median household income closer to around $55,000 a year. And if you start thinking about if you are a parent with, say, two kids, three kids, particularly if they're younger on the, on, on the younger side of that, that could amount to a tremendous amount of money. And that, again, is something that's going to discourage folks from being able to participate in the workforce. So even if they can't find child care, they might not be able to afford it. So one of the things that we wanted to focus on this past legislative session was really starting to think through that affordability issue. Still very concerned about access and um, availability, but what could we do to help more working families afford childcare and keep them in the workforce? Because this is something we, we heard about on a, on a really frequent basis where an employer might say, hey, we have this, this particular employee and they're, they're a phenomenal employee, but they're thinking about leaving because childcare is just so expensive for them and we'd really like to keep them in the workforce. What are some things that we might consider being able to do to help that individual uh, remain in the workforce and at the same time afford high quality childcare? So we, we spent a lot of time doing research, talking to a lot of employers, talking to a lot of folks in the childcare advocacy space, trying to figure out what exactly it is we can do to help address that affordability issue. And one of the solutions that we came up with was to work on incentivizing more employers to offer childcare in some form as a benefit of employment. So we see some employers already doing that. We have employers in Kentucky, for example, that offer things like on-site childcare. On-site childcare is a really difficult thing though for a lot of employers to do. It's very, very expensive. There's land access issues, there's zoning issues, there's liability issues. We were thinking more along the lines of how could we help more employers do things like offer a stipend, for example, um, a lump sum to help that particular employee ju just simply afford child care. So just as we offer things like uh, health insurance or maybe tuition reimbursement, what can we do to get more employers to offer things like that in the, in the child care space? So what House Bill 499 did is it created a, a pretty unique model uh, throughout, throughout the United States where if you are an employer and you want to offer an employee a something along the lines of a child care stipend, we'll just say $200 a month as an example of that, there is a process where the state can step in and match that contribution from the employer on a dollar for dollar basis up to 100% of the cost of care uh, for that individual worker. So for example, if you're an employer and you want to offer say a $200 a month benefit to um, your employee to help them defray the cost of childcare. The state will then step in and match that potentially up to $200, depending on the total cost of care and depending on that employee's household income. But what it does is that it gives that employer the ability to essentially double the size of their um, employee benefit. And then it also gives that worker or that parent in that situation a very, very large chunk of cash that they can use to offset the cost of childcare and really bring that cost down to a much lower level. One of the best parts of the bill, though, that I think is going to have 
the most long lasting impact is that for that process to work, you have to create a partnership between that individual, so the worker in this instance, the employer, and then also a child care provider. All three of those partners have to agree that this is what they're going to do. So you have the employer paying for part of it, the state coming in also matching that, so the state's technically a fourth partner, and then you have the provider that's agreeing to also participate in that partnership as well. One of the things that we've noticed in talking to a lot of employers is that there are not um, a whole lot of strong partnerships between employers and um, early childhood education providers and early childhood education services. So one of the nice things about Houseball 499 is that it's going to facilitate those partnerships in various parts of, of the state. And in the event that maybe Houseball 499 comes and goes or um, whatever happens to it, we're gonna build those partnerships. And I think that's gonna be one of the most important things uh, in the future for encouraging more employers to offer childcare as a benefit of employment and also getting childcare providers and employers to work together to solve the childcare challenges of everyday Kentuckians. That is incredibly exciting, Charles. And uh, I know that I, for one, am excited to see how it plays out uh, over the course of the next year and looking forward to uh, learning more about best practices and lessons learned from this, uh, this initiative. In terms of getting to that point where uh, you know, uh, if, if a chamber is in a similar situation as the Kentucky Chamber was, where you're seeing there's a need, uh, you you see a solution, but it's getting the right people in the right room. And, and like you said, making those connections. Uh, any either lessons that you learned or advice about maybe things you would have done differently um, for a chamber who is kind of ready to take that next step to putting a, a plan on paper into action? Yeah, um, there was a lot of trial and error with the development of this bill. Um, I think that's going to happen anytime you're creating sort of new innovative state policy, and it's probably gonna be a learning experience for us as we, as we go throughout the process. I think some of the key elements to this to though would include things such as helping policymakers understand the interconnections between childcare and workforce participation. I think a lot of them grasp the concept of the long-term impacts of early childhood education and the effects that that has on early childhood development and what that means for our future workforce. And that's, that's, that's a very vital thing that we should not lose sight of, and I don't want to understate it. However, a lot of employers are facing workforce shortages right now. And I think there's very few public policy issues that you can touch that have the immediate effect as say something like addressing childcare challenges has. Um, in Kentucky, we estimate roughly around 40 to maybe 55,000 parents are directly being uh, kept out of the workforce due to challenges associated with childcare. If you tackle that challenge, you could potentially free up upwards of 50,000 more people to participate in the workforce. That's, that's a huge return on your investment. So I think getting legislators and policymakers to understand this is not just solving a future problem uh, in the sense that it's going to help us develop our future workforce. You're, you're solving a problem that's occurring right now. And I think we did a really good job in Kentucky of helping lawmakers understand how urgent the issue was and how strong the return on investment could be to addressing workforce participation challenges in the state. So I think certainly educating lawmakers and helping them understand the interconnectivity between childcare and workforce participation, um, those, those are really, really important things. Um, I think you need to build a really robust and diverse coalition of supporters. That's something we worked very hard on uh, in Kentucky, where we had not only employers working together on this, early childhood education advocates working on this. Uh, we had folks directly from the childcare sector that were engaged on this issue, and we really all came together and um, uh, worked very closely with one another to educate legislators on, on this very, very important issue uh, and to get them to understand why this is a worthwhile investment. And then of course, at the end of the day, anybody that's worked on um, state policymaking, you really got to have a vocal champion for an issue like this within the legislature. And Kentucky's been, I think, really fortunate that we have folks, for example, like Representative Samara Heverin, uh, who is the sponsor for House Bill 499, who uh, pursued this bill uh, absolutely relentlessly. Um, and that's one of the keys to getting, um, to getting success on any policy issue, but in particular for one like this, um, 
a lot of it does come down, I think, to having those those really strong key players championing a bill. And the other thing I would just finally say is that, you know, with House Bill 499, it was one of those issues where the business community really rallied around it. Uh, we had members of our board advocating for this bill, um, folks from, from all over the state that really came together to advocate for it and to emphasize what level of priority this deserves uh, and why this needs to be addressed. There's lots of other lessons to be learned, I think, from um, from an experience like this bill. Um, but those are some of the top ones that, that stand out to me. Um, and I would certainly encourage any other chamber uh, throughout the state that's thinking about this issue. Start, start with those initial steps. Um, get your education campaign right. Build that diverse coalition. Identify a strong champion. And I think if you have those three ingredients, you're on a, a pretty good pathway to success. Charles, this has been both fascinating and incredibly helpful. Uh, very excited about everything that's going on in Kentucky and honestly can't wait to follow up with you in, in just a couple months to see how that implementation is coming. It's a pleasure as always, uh, Charles, and we're going to talk more soon, but thank you so much for your time today and can't wait to circle up soon. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate it.